Right, for this guide, we will be going through the Tartars, which is one of the four new civilization in Definitive Edition. Let's have a look at the civilization bonuses for the Tartars. We have them classified as a Cavalry Archer Civilization. And the bonuses are as follows. The sheep contain plus 50% food. So instead of having your sheep contain 100 food, of which you normally actually get use of about 88 to 91 of it, your sheep will now contain 150 food. So with a decay factored in, you will probably be able to make use of about 130 of that, between 120 to 130, depending on how many villages you have taking from the sheep. The second civilization bonus that we have for the Tatars is that the units deal plus 25% damage when fighting from higher elevation. You might think they already do that, that is standard in the game, that your units deal 25% more damage from a higher elevation and 25% less damage at the same time from the lower elevation. But this bonus is not actually an additional 25% damage from the higher elevation. So getting higher elevation, elevation gives you an additional bonus on top of the bonus that you already get for being at a higher elevation. And also Parthian Tactics is research for free, which is a very important technology to get for your Cavalry Archers when you do go Cavalry Archers, which gives them the extra attack and also the extra armor and pierce armor. The cost you save there is 200 food and 250 gold. So the totaled up economy bonuses are actually quite significant because you get all of the extra food on your sheep and then you also save 200 food and 250 gold in the Imperial Age when you are going with Cavalry Archers. Also the, ad, the extra bonus of getting Parthian Tactics for free is that you don't need to research it. You save the research time, you save the cost and also it's something you'll, you automatically get when you reach the Imperial Age. Because normally you'd, you'd first have to research it and it's not always the first technology that you research once you hit Imperial Age with Cavalry Archers. Then the unique unit for the Tartars will be the Keshik, which is a raiding cavalry. We'll have a look at that in a few minutes once we get to the unique unit. The unique technologies that we have for the, for the Tartars is Silk Armor, which gives your Light Cavalry and your Cavalry Archers plus one Pierce Armor. So basically, your Cavalry Archer line and your, your, your Hustle and your Heavy Cavalry Archer will have an additional plus one Pierce Armor, which will help your Cavalry Archers slightly against skirmishes, but not that much. Still try and keep them away from skirmishes, but it definitely helps against the crossbows as well. And then Timurid Siegecraft, which gives your trebuchets an extra range. And they do get siege engineers as well. So that is, that'll be pretty overpowered, um, in my opinion. We'll, we'll, we'll see that when we get there. So, and then also the team bonus is that your cavalry archers have plus two line of sight. I don't think this is one of the better team bonuses. This is one of the weaker team bonuses. But I mean, the other bonuses that the civilization has are pretty strong. Their normal civilization bonuses are pretty strong. The unique techs, you can argue is situational, but the civilization bonuses are pretty strong. All right, so let's move on to the barracks units, to the infantry for the Tartars. There really is nothing to write home about. They get squires, arson, and supplies, the new technology, but they cap out at two-handed swordsmen and at pikemen, so they don't even get halberdier or champion. Well, then again, the infantry is not their, their strong point, clearly. Also, let's have a look at the... Ooh, yeah, uh, if, you, if you look at the blacksmith, this is a civilization that definitely wants you to move away from using infantry at all. Um, you don't even get the castle age, you don't even get chainmail armor, castle age upgrade for your armor on your infantry. And you don't get your final infantry unit upgrades either, so it's a pretty useless barracks. Infantry wise, they're pretty weak. Alright, so let's look at the strength of, one of the strengths of the Tartars, one of the main strengths, and also is the stable, and also we get the first look at the Step Lancer. It is a, let's see what this is, it costs 70 food and 30 gold, so it's comparable food cost to the knight, but only half of the gold cost. It's a light cavalry unit with increased attack range. Interesting. They're strong in groups and they're we weak versus camel riders and archers because they don't get, well, they only get one pierce armor with no base melee armor for the step lancer. The elite step lancer still gets no base melee armor and only still the same one pierce armor. Let's have a look at their stats. 
The Step Lancer has got 60 health points. That's comparable to the Light Cavalry, so it's also 60, but it has 10 base attack, where the Light Cavalry has 7. The Elite Step Lancer has 80 health points and 12 base attack, where the Hussar has 75, so it's basically the same, but only still the 7 attack. So it is quite a powerful unit. It's a it's more of a raiding unit. The strength of it is, though, that similar to the Kamayuks of the Incas, it has one range. So it can attack through one line of units to the second line behind it. It is pretty situational. It, it won't be useful in all situations, but in some situations, this will be a pretty strong unit. Um, but it does have a weakness versus camels and archers. If we have a look at the rest of the stable, we do get all the way up to the Hussar, like I just alluded to, but we do miss the Paladin upgrade, so we cap out at Cavalier for the Tartars. They do, however, get the Heavy Camel as well, so you can take into the Camel line if you like, if your opponent is going heavily into Cavalry as well. And especially with the new civilization, I do expect that we will start seeing a lot more cavalry play these new civilizations do seem very cavalry heavy so we'll see a turn back again towards cavalry play that's where this does come in a little useful to have camels heavy camels as well so let's move over to the siege workshop for the tatars they do get siege ram however they miss siege onager and bombard cannon they also do not get so they get Siege Ram and fully upgraded Scorpions, and obviously they get the Siege Tower as well. We've already alluded to the Blacksmith upgrades, but let's have a look at it again. You get all of the Archer techs, all the way to Ring Archer Armor and Bracer, you get all of that. For your stable units, you get all of the Attack and Defense upgrades, but for your Infantry, your Defense upgrades caps out at the Scaremill Armor, which is your Feudal Age upgrade. You don't even get the Castle Age Defense upgrade. So your infantry is really definitely a no-go. You will not make infantry with the, the Tartars. So let's have a look at the dock for those who like playing water maps. The same as the Lithuanians, you get basically all of the technologies up to Castle Age. The only technologies you miss will be your heavy demolition ship, which you don't really see that often, the heavy demo ship and also ship ride this is quite a huge one to get for those prolonged late game water battles this will cost you in the end if you can't get this so not having ship ride might be a little bit of an issue if you if your water battles goes post imp let's have a look at the university techs so we get guard tower but no keep no arrow slits for those guard towers and also we don't get architecture as well after the masonry. All the other technologies are there. We get chemistry, we get siege engineers. This is what I wanted to look at earlier. So we get siege engineers. And on top of the siege engineers, we also get Timurid siege craft, which, which gives your trebuchets an additional plus one range. Like I said, with your towers, your defensive buildings, you don't get keep, but you do get bombard tower, which is pretty useful as well. Then we get to the castle. This is where it gets interesting. Let's just have a look at the um, unique technologies. We did discuss them already at the start, but just the prices. So we have silk armor, which is 400 wood and 300 gold, which is a pretty decent price for a castle age technology. And then your Timurid Siege Craft, which is actually very cheap for an Imperial Age technology, which is 500 food and 400 gold. It's basically the cost of two trebuchets to give all of your trebuchets one additional range, which I think will come in, could come in pretty powerful. The Keshik, the Tata Unique Unit, generates gold when fighting other units. I have not done test on to see how much gold it does generate. We'll have to do well we'll have to wait for Spirit of the Lord to do those tests. But yeah, once you get into fights with your Keshik, that actually generates gold for your civilization. But the problem is they do cost 80 gold. So you have, have a cost a pretty high cost of 50 food and 80 gold with your Keshiks. If you can have a few Keshiks, keep them alive, heal them up with your monks all the time, then that will actually be pretty useful because you'll have seemingly an endless gold supply then. The Tatars do get sappers, but they miss hoardings, which could become useful in the late game. 
Let's have a look at the monastery. The monastery texts are absolutely horrible. Missing redemption, missing heresy, missing sanctity. Heresy, not that common to see, but redemption is one of the go-to technologies to get in the castle age if you go with monks. They're missing that. Sanctity, also a technology that you want to get if you go with monks and you're missing that as well. Missing faith and also missing theocracy. Theocracy is, for higher level players, pretty useless because you just micro your monks a little better than you don't need theocracy. But for low level players, this is pretty important as well to make sure that you don't need to lose all the faith on all of your monks if you convert a unit with your group of monks. You do get all the way up to handcart as well in your town center and also town patrol. Let's have a look at all of the economy upgrades. So we get up to gold shaft mining. We're missing stone shaft mining, which is not that big a deal. We don't often see players going for that. We do miss the final wood upgrade, which as with the docks in long extended battles into late imperial age, this could prove costly. You do, however, get crop rotation in your mole, so you do get that upgrade at least, and also you get all of your market upgrades as well. So that is pretty much it for the Tatars. In my opinion, so far, we've only so far gone through the Lithuanians. I would definitely rank the Tatars under the Lithuanians. We'll see how they play out in the competitive scene. But personally, I would rank them under the Lithuanians. They're just missing a few too many techs. Although I do like the interesting addition of the camel riders and also the step lancers. But we'll see where that takes them. They're missing paladin. So there's a few missing upgrades, but we'll see how that works out for them. And then, yes, like I said, that is it for the, for the Tatars. Thank you for watching the video. Remember to subscribe by clicking on my face to the left. To watch what I'd like you to watch, click the top video on the right. If you'd prefer to see what YouTube thinks you should watch, then click the bottom video. So until next time, happy gaming!